Dum 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 Hey there! My previous video about the Grainfather Conoco Fermenter covered recommendations, lessons learned, and modifications to meet my specific application requirements. This video is about the process I use to clean the Grainfather Conoco Fermenter. Are you excited? I know I am. Now, I know that there's other videos out there that show how to clean the Grainfather Conoco Fermenter, but over the years I've developed a sequence of steps that work for me. Before we get started, though, there's one very important thing to keep in mind. Clean the Grainfather Conical Fermenter right after transferring the beer. The residue inside the fermenter will dry quickly, and it can be very difficult to clean the inside surfaces of the fermenter if it's allowed to sit for a while. So, don't dilly-dally. Put on your rubber apron, your boots, your face shield, your rubber gloves, and get down to it. I don't wear that stuff, but you can. First. Here's a list of the equipment that I need when cleaning the Grainfather Conical Fermenter. Of course, Grainfather Conical Fermenter, a plastic container, a garden hose with a jet spray nozzle, a light duty scouring pad, and as a side note, I get a case of 20 of the 6 inch by 9 inch scouring pads on Amazon for about a dollar a pad, and then I cut the pads in half, so 40 scouring pads is going to last me a long time. Some 5 star PBW alkaline cleaner. By the way, PBW stands for Powdered Brewery Wash, which is a proprietary cleanser originally created for cores. I bet you didn't know that. And I'll need some 5 Star Star Sand, which is a high foaming, acid based, no rinse sanitizer when used at the recommended dilution. So, now that I have all the equipment that I need, let's get her done. First, I mix two and a half gallons of star sand according to the manufacturer's instructions, and I pour some of the star sand into a container. Next, I remove the lid of the fermenter and rinse the inside surfaces using a garden hose with a jet spray nozzle. I dump out the tube and then rinse the inside surfaces again with a jet spray nozzle, and I repeat this process a couple of times until the rinse water is clear. Next, I remove the dual valves liquid inlet tube that's inside the fermenter. I rinse it off, and then I put it into the container of star sand. Next, I fill the fermenter about a quarter full of water, and then I add two to three tablespoons of PBW. I then fill the fermenter to about half full, using the jet nozzle to dissolve most of the PBW crystals. Now, according to the manufacturer, PBW can be used with hot or cool water. The temperature of the cool water should not be below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not a problem if you live in Florida. And if you use PBW in cool water, then you should rinse with cool water. Conversely, if you use PBW in warm or hot water, then rinse with the same temperature water. Like I said before, I cut the scouring pad in half and then proceed to use the pad to scrub the bottom and the upper inside surfaces of the grandfather conical fermenter. I dump the scouring pad into the soapy PBW solution multiple times as I scrub the residue off the inside surfaces. When the inside surfaces are clean, I dump out the soapy water. I put a towel down on a flat surface and then I flip the conical fermenter upside down and place it on the towel. I remove the single pin triclamp securing the dual valve assembly to the bottom ferrule of the fermenter by loosening the cross hole wing nut. As a side note, it's a good idea to have a spare set of silicone seals on hand in case you damage or lose any of the seals. Grandfather sells a spare set of these seals online, and if they're on back order, have Grandfather notify you when they're in stock. Next, I remove the dual valve assembly with the cone plug seal and set it aside. I flip the fermenter right side up and place it on the ground, and then I thoroughly rinse out the inside of the fermenter, letting the rinse water and any remaining PBW crystals flow out the bottom hole of the fermenter. Next, I fill a bowl with a PBW solution and I remove the cone plug seal and put it into the bowl. Then I dunk the dual valve assembly into the solution of PBW to remove any residue and then I put the cone plug seal into the container of star sand. 
Next I unscrew the sample ball valve tube and remove the seal and set the seal aside in a secure place so I don't lose it. It's a very small and thin seal and if you put it into a bowl of star sand it might get lost. I then put the sample ball valve tube into the bowl of star sand. Next I unscrew the sample ball valve assembly, turn the ball valve handle to the open position, and then put the assembly into a bowl of star sand. PBW Solution can make the dual valve assembly adapter a little slippery, so I use a washcloth to give me some more grip to start unscrewing the adapter. Once I get it started, I unscrew the adapter and then put the adapter and the spring into the container of star sand. Then I remove the plug shaft from the dual valve body, give it a good rinse, and put it into the container of star sand. Then I rinse out the dual valve body and also put it into the container of star sand. Next I flip the fermenter upside down again and put it back onto the towel with the control module's pogo pins or, if you have the updated controller kit installed, the control module facing forward. I reassembled the dual valve assembly by first inserting the plug shaft into the dual valve body and installing the ball valve into the adapter. I find that installing the ball valve into the adapter gives me a better grip and control as I'm compressing the spring. I insert the spring onto the plug shaft and holding the dual valve body in one hand and the ball valve in the other hand, I compress the spring and rotate the ball valve clockwise to start the threads. I then complete the installation by rotating the adapter and compressing the spring onto the base of the plug shaft. I then take the sample tube seal, dip it into star sand, and place it onto the base of the sample tube. I install the sample tube into the ball valve assembly and turn the ball valve handle to the closed position. I find that hand tightening all of these parts is sufficient and there's no need to use any tools to tighten them. I take the comb plug seal out of the bowl of star sand and I place it on the bottom ferrule of the conical fermenter. Then I place the dual valve assembly on top of the comb plug seal and position the dual valve yeast dump port so that it's facing the front of the conical fermenter. I install the dual valve assembly using the single pin tri-clamp and tightening the cross hole wing nut. As a side note, before I tighten the tri-clamp, I rotate the tri-clamp so my hand can easily access the cross hole wing nut, which makes turning the wing nut a lot easier. Now before I remove the grandfather conical fermenter from the towel, I take the opportunity to clean the outside surfaces with a stainless steel cleaner and polish. Even though I will later install an insulation jacket over the fermenter, I like to make it a habit of keeping my grandfather equipment looking good. I turn the conical fermenter upright and place it on the ground, and then I pour star sand around the inside of the conical fermenter so that the star sand covers all of the surfaces. I then spray star sand around the top of the inside surfaces to make sure everything is covered. I put the conical fermenter back up on the sink drain and look to see if there's any leaks coming from the dual valve tap assembly. I then check the operation of the yeast dump valve and then I turn the red sample valve handle to the open position to check the sample valve operation. I then drain the remainder of the star sand from the fermenter using the yeast dump valve and the sample valve. I put the grandfather conical fermenter back on the ground and install the liquid inlet tube at the bottom of the fermenter. I then flip the fermenter upside down and put it onto a towel to dry. At this point, I make sure to turn the red sample valve handle to the closed position. Lastly, I clean the fermenter lid and spray the lid with star sand, and then I set it upright so it will drain and air dry. As a side note, it's a good idea to periodically remove the lid's silicone gasket and lube it, as this will help keep a tight seal when pressure transferring the beer from the fermenter to the keg. Well, that's it. That's the process I use to clean the grandfather conical fermenter. It's quick and it's easy. Of course, it's always easier if you can find somebody else to clean the fermenter for you. Right, honey? Hey! That wasn't very ladylike. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Cheers!